Hey guys, hope you all have been well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm actually gonna get started doing my makeup. It's a get ready with me. I'm gonna be talking about some embarrassing times I've had in my life. First of all, when I was a kid, I was just disgustingly shy. So that makes everything worse. But before I get into this, if you are going to be watching future videos, I just would like to let you know that there's a possibility that I'm going to be in this exact same outfit for all the other videos this week. I filmed three videos for next week, what you're seeing now, and all the videos were horribly out of focus. So now I got to try and get everything done raw. So we're going to be talking about embarrassing stories. I have a couple that I wanted to talk about. This video could be made 3,526 times over because, uh, yep, I've had quite a few embarrassing moments in my life, but we're just gonna stick with a few and we'll see how it goes. Full list of products though, by the way, if I didn't mention it, um, I will be listing it in the description box as well as on my Instagram so that I don't have to like keep referring back to the makeup. I can just talk about all the embarrassment I've been through in life. So this first story was not necessarily embarrassing for me. I was more so embarrassed for the person that did it. So when I was younger, there is this resort that we have here and it was a really popular spot to take your kids to go swimming at. And my brother and I would always go we loved going there particularly me like i looked forward to going to this place so like many weekends before that we ended up going my mom i don't know if my dad was there on this day but i know for sure my mom was there and this area was like the little kids area i was probably about eight years old nine years old when this happened so we were at the the kids portion and it was the regular swimming pool that kind of went like from the shore would go down and get deeper. And there was this cave with different waterfalls and then the slide. So I'm really excited because I I love, I love this place. I love swimming in pools. It gets me really excited. Just swimming in general is, it's very fun for me. So this was like, I was looking forward to this weekend. So we did our swimming. We were there for about maybe 45 minutes tops. And I remember being in the caves and this shy girl for, I don't know, whatever reason was feeling like she was uh, gonna be social. And I remember talking to some kids. Now I don't recall if they were, kids that I knew from school because it, it just doesn't make sense to me that I'm just gonna talk to kids because I'm so shy but I remember talking to kids and we were in the, the cave area where the waterfalls were and all I remember hearing was get out of the pool and being the scaredy cat that I was I was like what the, what the hell like what's going on am I in trouble it's always my first thought am I in trouble I was so afraid to get in trouble as a kid anyways they they kept saying get out of the pool and we can't see who's yelling this because we couldn't see anything since we were inside so we go outside of the cave and as you go outside of the cave you have to round the front of the pool where it goes from like the shoreline into like pretty much the rest of the pool. And this part, the shoreline is visible to everybody. So I hear get out of the pool, everyone gets out of the cave and we're heading, I'm heading towards my mom. So I have to pass by the, the pool area and all you see, I kid you not, at the shoreline of the pool is this huge pile of and the water is just brushing up against this thing like it was dead center someone must have seen what the hell was going on whoever did this thought that the bathroom was too far away and this individual probably had a really good breakfast because there was a lot of it okay but I, I literally had to pass by it and I'm like looking and my mom and I what the hell I go, who did this and they weren't gonna open up the pool again I mean even if they did they cleaned it I probably didn't want to swim in there anyways like there's there's no way I'm gonna swim so we ended up leaving but I remember feeling so bad for the person that did it I mean it was a kid they probably didn't care like they didn't know what the hell they were doing but still I felt so bad because there were there were quite a few people at the pool and you had shut down the pool because of your poop you dropped off your kids 
at the pool. I wonder if my brother still remembers. All right, so this next story, it was embarrassing for me. And it was embarrassing because I played myself. I thought I had the perfect, the perfect plan. And that wasn't the case. So at my old house, the one that I grew up in, again, I must have been around the same age. So I don't know where you live, but around these parts, you don't go running in the rain. Like, it's just a big no-no. Your parents won't let you do it because you're gonna get sick. So I've never got to play in the rain, but that was my plan. I was gonna go run in the rain. So at my old house, we have this like double driveway it's like two parts so two cars can fit this way two cars two cars this way and it's pouring rain so my plan was i'm gonna go run outside in the rain because my parents had friends over they're gonna be busy at the back of the house because we had like a backside kitchen so you couldn't see the driveway so they're gonna be in the kitchen and i can go run outside in the rain just bask in all its glory that i see on tv because I don't know why everyone in the States is allowed to run outside in the rain, but I wasn't. I was just gonna run outside, just enjoy it, come back in, change and act like nothing happened. I am running in the rain. I am enjoying it like it is raining outside. And then out of nowhere, I don't know if I was just like psyching myself out, but I thought that someone had come outside to the front of the house where I was. And so my dad, he used to work for the government and he had a government car. It was a white truck. And so I hid behind it thinking I'm not gonna get caught. Like I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna be sneaky about it. So I'm hiding behind this car and on this side of the driveway, that's where I'm at. The, the water kind of runs down towards it because we kind of live a little bit on this, like at the end of a slope. And so there's there's mud buildup, rocks, mildew is just it's pretty thick stuff. Like if you step in it, your foot's going to get just piled in gross grossness. I'm so I'm in the back of the car making sure that I don't get caught because I will probably be killed by my mother. And I remember bending down to get lower than like the bed of the the truck and so i held on to the tire and then my butt slipped on all of this mud like i'm talking thick inches of built up mud and it's raining right i slip and i fall so i fall on one side and i'm like my plan is ruined. I remember just freaking out. Like I, I was rushing to get back up. Like I'm dead at this point, I'm dead. So as I'm getting up, I slip again and I fall on the other side. So now I'm dirty on both sides. I am screwed. There is no way I can hide from this. My house, it, it, it's carpet all the way through. I can't walk in with all this mud. I'm just, I'm, I'm dead right? My, my mom's going to kill me. I don't know if I was crying. I probably was because I cried about everything as a child, but um, I attempted to pick myself up yet again. And what happens? I fall again. And now I am just, it's game over. I've, I've got mud everywhere. And you know what's sad? I don't know if it's sad. I think it might've been a good thing. It's a blessing. I, I guess you can say. I don't remember what happened. Maybe my mom killed me and I just don't remember. I just came back to life. But I don't remember what the punishment was. I don't remember what anyone said. I just remember knowing that I was dead. My plan was had gone to crap, basically. And you know what? Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever attempted to play in the rain since then. My plan of just being like a ninja badass, no one's going to know what I'm doing, failed. Epic fail. I was getting into my story so much that I forgot to powder before I've been doing my brows, so I did that off camera. So uh, moving on to the next story. Uh, this is this happened at the baseball field. Now, I, if you've been here, you know that I love baseball. I watch baseball all the time. And uh, that's because I grew up at the baseball field, basically. So even before I was born, it was in my mom's tummy, I was going to the baseball field because my dad has coached baseball for as long as I can remember. And so my weekends were always, 
always at the baseball field. And even though I'm shy, I knew a lot of people because, you know, my parents would make us hang out with them. It was a pretty close knit group. If your child was on the baseball team, it was kind of like family. So I knew quite a few people just because of that, because my dad was a coach and he's been a coach for so long. So I was pretty comfortable at the baseball field. I wasn't ashamed to just go inside the dugout. But that being said, you know, I knew quite a few of the kids and we would always play together. Our parents were there. They were usually handling the barbecue. My mom and like the parents would always plan a barbecue so that after the kids game was done, they could just eat lunch there. And so while everyone was doing that, me and a couple kids, and my brother, I know my brother was there for sure. At this b particular baseball field, there are these Lottie Stones. Eh, they're just, they're important to our people. Just look it up, L-A-T-T-E Stones. And they're not really big, but they've got chains, these huge linked chains that, one chain was like this big, okay? And they were locked together, made out of who knows what metal probably and they could like you could swing on it at least that's what we decided that it was for every time we went to the baseball field one of the kids was trying to do this like they would swing and then kind of do like a flip off of it they would like go over the chain and like land and i don't know if i was just feeling super confident that day but i remember thinking like Shh, easy I can do that I'm just I'm gonna dismount and I'm gonna stick it okay I was gonna channel my Dominic Mochiano and I was gonna stick that landing long story short it didn't happen I did not stick the dismount I remember getting like preparing to do that so I'm swinging on this this huge huge chain thing and as I went forward my body went back and and I basically like I did the flip but unintentionally and I did backwards and I pretty much landed on my face and I remember they were laughing of course like girl falls dead on her face I probably would have laughed but I was so embarrassed and so I remember that our car wasn't too far away and so I remember running towards my car and just like hiding of pure embarrassment again I don't know if I cried I probably did I cry about everything. I have a fear of everything and I cry about everything. I was that child. I'm better guys, I promise you, but still. I remember hiding there for a little while and by the time I got there, it was like, it was over. I wasn't being made fun of, it was just, it happened, you know? We moved on, moved on to another game, probably forgot about what happened. But for me, I remember feeling like, I know so many of the people here. And even though like, there's a 99% chance they didn't even see what happened because everyone's tending to their own thing. I'm thinking, yeah, they saw it. So I was just, I was embarrassed the whole time. I was so sure that I could do what that kid did. Guess not, girl. Yes, not. Okay, this next one happened at my house and I, I had a partner who's my brother, the one I mentioned like every other time, less than a year apart, and so we were always together. But this time we were a duo. So where I'm from, there's not much to do. But you take it back like years, I'm talking maybe decades, as kids, there was even less to do. So your options, or my options were play inside with my brother, play outside with my brother, or go to my cousin's house, who happens to be my neighbor, and play there with my brother. So we decided we're gonna go play outside. And my mom has a bunch of plants. Anyone that knows my family knows that my mom has plants and flowers. I mean, everything. She had every kind of succulent growing up, any house plants, snake plants, hibiscus, orchids. She's had everything. And so my brother and I go outside and there's this plant, it's huge, the leaves are huge, there's no flowers on it, but the leaves are huge, and they kind of vein from like a purple red into the green, but they're huge, and my mom had a lot of them in big pots, so we decided that was gonna be the enemy, okay, the plant, that plant was gonna be the enemy, and we were gonna fight them, and so it starts off as, okay, you're the enemy, we're gonna defeat you, and we're just like, you know just kicking and punching at leaves basically 
but we decided to turn it up a notch and uh, we were going to go full on ninja on these plants because they were going to obliterate the world and then we started to um, pretty much crush the plants like we're twisting these things and we're smashing them and bending them and snapping them in half i don't really remember what my brother was doing because i was so in the zone like i needed to do my part to save the world so yeah i'm we're basically ruining my mom's plan and uh you know as a child I, I was scared to get in trouble but you know every time you have a sibling with you and you're kind of like getting in trouble together you kind of don't feel as bad because you're not going to receive all the punishment it's shared so i was kind of like okay I'm not the only one doing this. My brother's gonna get in trouble too. So we're just, we're gonna go all out. And so we're crushing this plan and all of a sudden, all I remember was my hands. My hands started to like, like pins were just stabbing at them and they were just burning. Come to find out that uh, this particular plant does not do well with human contact. We had the sap because remember we're crushing these things. We had the sap all over our hands and my brother and I ended up running, running into my mom's room and the air conditioner was on. She wasn't in there. She didn't know what was going on yet. We were crying hysterically because it was so painful. I probably offered Jesus my soul to let it stop and he said, no, nope, you're gonna have to suffer. I don't really remember what happened i know that we had to just wait it out there's no, there was nothing anyone could do but it, it took a little while for it to completely go away and it's just it's sad you know because one i got defeated by a plant the evil plant won at the end of the day by the end of the day we were the evil ones because we destroyed my mom's my mom's plants and it sucks because we my mom didn't even have to punish us we punished ourselves breaking those damn plants. Complete stupidity. I can tell you some other stuff that my brother and I used to do. Oh, this one time, it's not embarrassing, it's kind of scary. So my dad had these candies. The, it was in a jar in the indoor kitchen area. And my brother and I would always steal some. We, we would steal them. That's what we did. And they were really tasty, but they weren't for us. They were like diabetic candy, something like that. We would steal them sneakily we would just try and like you know kind of like ninja snatch some when no one was inside the, that area and i remember stealing one piece and like shoving it in my mouth and i ended up choking i would much rather like try and solve it myself than have to call my mom and she knows that I'm eating my dad's candy when I'm not supposed to. I was just like gagging, like trying for, trying to let it come out and it just wouldn't come out. It ended up coming out, but I was, I was just mortified. I'm not even gonna lie, I probably still ate the candy, but uh, it was a near death experience all because I wanted my dad's diabetic candy. Oh, there was also this, this time, this one time we had a, we had a refrigerator inside the house. We had one outside as well, but we had one inside the house and that kind of stored a lot of the medicine. There's this, I don't know if it's Japanese, I'm pretty sure it's Japanese medicine that you will put on like burns and scars and it stung, stung the crap out of your skin. And my brother and I hated it because I mean, we're kids, right? We're definitely gonna get scrapes and stuff. And that's my mom's go-to. That's her medicine of choice. We open the refrigerator and we're going to attempt to get rid of this medication. We were unsuccessful because we didn't know how to take the cap off of the top to spill the medicine it had like this rubbing like i don't know what you call it kind of like lip glosses with that like fuzzy thing and you just apply it kind of had that on the top and you couldn't just squeeze it out it was a like a glass bottle so yeah my brother and i had many attempts at trying to be like save ourselves with not much success i mean what can i say yeah you, you live and you learn right okay i'll give you one more this was embarrassing because looking back at it as an adult it's i mean jesus christ my mom my brother and i are visiting my oldest brother in college he went to school in hawaii as did i i forget if my little brother like the youngest one was there too but i i know for sure it's my mom my brother who's 
right beneath me and then me. So to get back home, we go from Hawaii to Guam, Guam to Saipan. That's where I live. And so we're on, we're going to get on the plane. We're at the airport and I notice this boy. Oh my gosh, it's so romantic. I notice him. He's, we're, we're gonna get on the same plane together. Orange polo shirt, got a chain. His haircut looked like Brian from the Backstreet Boys, kind of like push forward, kind of Caesar-ish. Blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, he was gonna be in a boy band. He, that's, where, that's where he was destined to be. And I was destined to be his wife. And I'm a shy kid. I'm not gonna go talk to this guy, but I sure as hell can stare at him. At any time I had the opportunity to like, you know, get a sneak peek at him, wherever he was seated, I forgot where. We were on the same plane and I was trying to look for him. I knew that once we got to Guam, that was it. We would have to wait 10 years till we meet each other again and get married, right? So we get to Guam and I'm like sad because I'm not gonna see boy band man anymore. God had other plans though. So there's a storm in Guam and I can't fly home because you gotta get on a charter flight and it's a smaller plane weather's bad and so they're gonna put us up at the hotel for the night we're gonna fly really early morning the next day so we got on the bus we're gonna head to the hotel my mom my brother and i were sitting at the back of the bus who walks in to the bus the cute boy band boy orange polo chain haircut and my heart is excited like oh my god jesus I found my husband, like he's following me, it's destiny, right? So we get to the hotel, we ended up, you know, putting our bags and we were gonna eat at the buffet for dinner at the hotel. And uh, he's eating there too with his dad. I'm pretty sure that was his dad. It was just the two of them. And I'm actually really nauseous. I'm a bad flyer amongst many other things in my life, but yeah, I, I suck at flying. I'm scared of it, I'm scared of everything and i hate plain food so i'm just sick i don't know what caused it but i mean there you go but this boy is giving me something to look forward to i don't want to eat don't feel good but he's making me feel some type of way so we're all back at the airport when i head to saipan and when we start flying the weather is still pretty bad and my butt is puking like every few minutes. I just, I can't stand it. I can't hold it in. Nothing is in my tummy. So I'm basically just taking out liquid at this time. I know, gross. But it's embarrassing because it's a small plane and everyone knows that I'm going to the bathroom a thousand times on this 35 minute flight. So embarrassing. We get to the airport, got to baggage claim and I'm planning like I just I don't need to stand right next to him but I kind of like want to be close so I can stare at him and maybe like we can have eye contact Ooh, so romantic and I'm planning like we gotta go to customs around the same time I need to see this boy I need to see where he goes and we need to see each other off at the exit we go outside and I see him he they're waiting for their car and my car is already there for pickup so I'm like <sighs> God, God, thank you for giving me this extra time with my husband. But still, why does it have to end now? So we leave and I leave handsome boy behind. Was it going to be our last encounter? No, it wasn't. Technically it was physically. Like I never saw him physically again, but it was either the next day or like a few days after I opened the paper and handsome boy is in the paper. So I think he and his dad came for like some sports thing and um, they ended up turning up in the paper. And I remember telling my brother like, oh my God, you remember this boy from the airplane? And to top it all off guys, I actually cut out the photo and it is still in my treasure box till this day. So I have this box that I've kept since probably eighth grade. It has all of my, my my memorabilia stuff that's sentimental and i'm only i've only allowed myself that one box i couldn't go beyond it so the clipping is actually still in that box boy band boyfriend will always be with me no i will not show you his picture i don't know where he is in the world married or on a reunion tour who knows but it's so embarrassing just like thinking of what i did just so that i can see this point i really have been loving these lashes by the way i mean look at that 
All right, so I did my other eye, applied some mascara, and I'm gonna finish off with lips, and we will call it a day. I'm gonna try and film two other videos, so Lord help me. Guys, it is so dark outside. I pulled back the curtains so I can get some natural lighting, and it's useless. Two more videos to film. I can do it, I can do it. Hey, stop it, film me here. All right, there we go, face is done. And those are all of my stories for now. If you like it, heck, I might just do another one. I mean, everyone has embarrassing stories, right? And it's, it's like we're in a time where does it even matter? Do all your horrible memories matter? Because we're living in one horrible, big horrible memory right now. What's putting a few more into the world? Anyways, so thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. It was all in good fun. I wanted to do a fun video where I just sat down and, you know, not really cared. Again, a full list of products will be listed in the description box below. And all of my other makeup looks can be found on Instagram. First link in the description box down below where I post a photo of my makeup look along with all the products in the caption. Till the next video, I hope you all are doing well, taking great care of yourselves. I will see you all next time. Bye guys.